Broadcasting Television Network. I'm your host, Boyd Pierce, and alongside of me, they are promoter, Leroy McGurk. Now, Leroy, you've been missing the past few weeks. I know that one of the reasons for the earlier part of the weeks was you were attending the National Wrestling Alliance annual convention, and I know that you found out in who the two world champions that are now recognized, Harley Race and Nelson Royal, right? That's right. That's right. Now, there was a controversy about Nelson Royal's championship, as you no doubt have told our fans with this uh, uh, Mexican wrestler, Madrill. Alberto Madrill, Alberto right. Madrill in Houston. But I understand that he has, uh, what is it that he's down with? Boy, he's going to be hepatitis. He was unable to defend that title and give the return clause to Nelson Royal, so the NWA yeah. went back, and Nelson Royal is the world junior heavyweight right. champion. Right, you know, a champion must defend the title against the fellow that he took it from within 30 days, Boyd, and, and Madrill was unable to do this. It's an unfortunate situation, but that's the rules, and so Royal does have the championship again. And I know two weeks ago now you wasn't here, Leroy, and what about the deal between Ernie Ladd and Paul Arndorf as the NWA stripped away the North American title from Paul Arndorf? It's the most unusual situation there, and I guess maybe they're going to come. They didn't do that in the days that I wrestled because we didn't have the instant replay on television, but uh, the National Wrestling Alliance has decided that when they have the instant replay and they prove who was the winner, and that's how Ladd got the championship back. Times have changed and things are changing. A great card you and Bill Watts have signed for this week. We'll have the main event, Jose Lothario versus The Brute. And for all the kids, stay with us because we'll have the popular little midget stars, four of them in a tag team match. Right now, the contestants are in the ring. Reese Bowden with the induction of the opening event. And this event is for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. In the red corner at 240 pounds from Duluth, Minnesota, Bill Irwin. In the blue corner at 244 pounds from Tampa, Florida, Paul Orndorff. And action gets underway, and you hear the hands of the fans here on Championship Wrestling pulling for Florida's Paul Orndorff. Jack Howe calls for the bell, Orndorff against rookie Bill Irvin. We talked about Paul Orndorff and how he must have been downhearted as two weeks ago, stripped by the National Wrestling Alliance of his coveted North American heavyweight title and reverted back because of the films furnished by Ernie Ladd, who reclaimed that title. And here he is, a very gallant young man coming right back on the trail of the North American heavyweight title, a very determined Paul Arndorf with a right forearm as retreating Bill Irvin. Leroy McGurk has gone from our table and taken his place, his associate and partner, Cowboy Bill Watts. Well, of course, you know, Leroy is uh, a master at disguising his feelings. He's a, he's a veteran, but he was really upset about the thing with Orndorff and Ladd, as was anybody with any sense of justice. Like I said, how can a guy defend the title two months and then be stripped of it? And, of course, this is an experiment they're even having in the National Football League, and they got seven officials out there, and they still have an instant replay sometime overrule these decisions. And uh, Leroy and I are, are of the opinion that you take the good with the bad, that it's a gamble. Uh, but it, what, should ha what the final decision is that night should stand. And it's, it's not as confusing, and it's not something where a young kid like Paul Orndorff that's just captured everybody by storm goes around and he defended the North American against some of the top guys there. Stan the Lariat Hansen, Ernie Ladd himself, uh, Bruiser Brody, uh, the assassin, the brute. And then all of a sudden has it taken away from him on a reverse ruling. So here you see a man that's really on the trail. I'll say the thing about Orndorff. He takes his lumps like a man, and he's determined to win it back. He's beat Ernie Ladd twice now for that title. Once when Ray Candy was badly injured, and we're going to see Ray Candy uh, via uh, VTR from Atlanta, Georgia, following this. And these are two men that are really hot on the trail of the North American champion Ernie Ladd, as is the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Oh, tremendous agility there by Orndorff. Wow, that drop kick Boyd was right up the side of that Bill Irwin's face. And he's in that powerful full Nelson. And Orndorff is really after. I don't think that Irwin, his arms are locked up too high. I don't think he'd be able to lever it down. And Jack Howe calls the decision and breaks the hole before he feels that Irwin would be badly injured. And the victory goes to the man, former North American heavyweight champion and a man vowing to regain that title, Paul Orndorff from Florida. 
And right now we'll go by videotape replay to Atlanta, Ray Candy versus the Challenger. Let's watch that now. Thirty pounds, the challenger, the challenger. His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 285 pounds, the candy man, Ray Candy. Ray Candy. Ray Candy going up against the challenger. Ray Candy, certainly no stranger to Atlanta wrestling fans. Big, powerful man. Extremely good natured, but he becomes uh, a monster man in that ring if his uh, temper is riled. Candy, duck him. Go behind, a away, cinch, and a take down Candy with a ride. Challenger trying to sit out and escape. Candy keeps the ride. Candy continues to ride his man. Started to float over. Challenger finally makes it to the ring ropes and forces the break. Good ride by Ray Candy. Candy with a hip lock takedown. Nice to have James Witt from Chattanooga visiting here in the television studio today. by the challenger but candy fired back caught him to the side of the head the challenger went down stunned and back on his feet and backing away candy gets this man into a hammerlock and the challenger once again heads for the ring ropes and uh, forces the break candy Bottom wrist lock. Lateral drop and take down into a lateral press. And again, back on their feet. Candy backing away, allowing the man to come out of the corner. And the challenger must be coming uh, a lot, very, very frustrated at this point. Challenger ripping across the face of Ray Candy. High knee lift that puts Candy into the ropes. And so the challenger. He's already taken a lot of punishment now. Dishing a lot out to uh, Ray Candy. Candy caught on the midsection again. Candy driven up against those ring ropes. Candy comes back with a forearm that staggers the challenger. Candy catches him again, another massive forearm, and a third one puts the challenger on the canvas. Now Candy. Straight left, jabs, and a right. Puts the challenger Back to the canvas. Candy brings him up. Full body slam. Candy back drops. The challenger coming off the ropes. Candy with a headbutt. Hooks the far leg and scores the pin. And so the victor, in short order, the very, very popular Ray Candy. Now you've seen Paul Orndorff in action, you saw Ray Candy in action, so Heavy hangs the North American title on the head of Ernie Ladd as these two top challengers are lined up and primed up for that challenge. We'll be right back with more action after this work. Returning to championship wrestling this week, the world-renowned Texas Cowboy, Cowboy Bob Ellis. He'll be in live action, but first, we had a pre-recorded interview with Cowboy Bob, so listen to those comments right now. Cowboy Bob Ellis is a name that's quite well known throughout the entire world among wrestling fans. He's been absent from our area for a while now, but he's back and with a purpose, a purpose which is best told in his own words. I'll tell you. This, I'm after this Ron Outlaw Bass. It's, uh, it's happened back in California here a while back. He and I had a pretty good tag team going. We'd beaten everything out there. So one, um, we had a big match out there, and he got a little, got his old hair back up on the back of his neck. And after the match, well, he and a couple of his old uh, common cheros, they got me down and roached my mane, got a big old set of horse clippers out of the pickup, and roached my mane, made me slick-headed. Well, I'll tell you, 
There's a lot of wrestlers did a lot of things to me over the years, but nobody has insulted and humiliated me like this Ron Bass. Now, people out there know that Ron Bass ain't got a full set of branding irons, got an IQ of about a quarter pound of beef jerky, but that don't matter. He still did that to me, and I'm going to get him if I have to chase him over the whole territory. And I can do it. I can ride that old bronc. I'll put my old bull spurs on, and I'll ride him. And after I get through with him, I'm going out in the pickup and get my sunbeam horse clippers about that big i'm gonna wind them up and i'm gonna make him just slick headed like i am well there there you have it bob ellis has a purpose in being here as you know outlaw ron bass has been back in the area a short time now and he's created quite a sensation but cowboy bob ellis has a few scores to settle with the big outlaw well i'll tell you he's, he's just like my uncle frank had a had a uh, he got him a little old mountain lion once going to make a deer hound out of him and he got big enough and they started chasing deer one time it killed old deer and old, that old mountain lion pounced on him and uncle frank went over there to get the mountain lion off and boy just chomp 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 ate uncle frank up and that's exactly what he is you can't trust this no good ron bass and i'm gonna get him we hope you're there to see it because it's going to be happening right here in this area and this event is for one fall with a 10 minute time limit in the red corner at 260 pounds from istanbul turkey ali bay the turk in the blue corner at 250 pounds from San Angelo, Texas, Cowboy Bob Ellis. The next event is Cowboy Bob Ellis. Tells you why he's here, a man with a mission, taking on the barrel-chested Turk from Istanbul. Here's Bill Watts. Well, you know, Bob Ellis, of course, been an internationally known main eventer as long as I can remember. And most people, when they get humiliated, like Bob must have been when Bass and his cronies got him in Los Angeles, uh, they try to hide it. It seems like Bob has set it right up there as a badge of courage. He's he's just left himself slick-headed, he says, until he gets even. And uh, I guarantee you one thing, if you had to look in that mirror every morning and shave, you couldn't miss what had happened to you. So uh, it is an awful good reminder of what Ron Bass has done against him and double-crossed him in that situation. And I can think of a lot of guys I'd rather have on my trail than Bob Ellis. Or the Turk. The Turk is a powerful, squat-bodied... Knee lift by Bob Ellis after a few forearm smashes, and Bob is always pressing the attack. He's perpetually moving in there. You can hear the fans solidly backing the Cowboy Bob Ellis against the Turk. Real top star, Cowboy Bob Ellis. Both these men, this is this is a very close competitive match. Both of them rugged individuals. Of course, the Turk is ball-headed by choice, and Bob sure wasn't. That would be, I can't think of anything more humiliating. You know, some things are humiliating more than they are injury or hurting you. Like, you know, when a guy slaps you out there, boy, it may sting you, but it just flat fires you up because he's insulting you when he slaps you. You know, that's, I'd rather a guy hit me with a forearm or a punch or a kick or anything than to slap me, even though it doesn't carry the impact of the other maneuvers. Big main event today, Jose Lothario versus The Brute. The four midgets. Kids should get a big kick out of that match. That's always fast and wild and woolly. Drop to hold by Bob. Leg barred, putting that pressure on that Turk's head. Generally, the rest of your body goes where your head does. Next from Atlanta, we have Ernie Ladd, the present North American champion. Turk is moving in, using those steel cables to cut off the air, Bob Ellis, and using the count to his advantage.
count. Doesn't get it. The Turk couldn't hold him down for the three. Bob's still coming back to the attack on that leg. Usher asking the Turk if he wants to give the match. In pro wrestling, the submission holes are illegal. Turk's trying to spread the base of Bob Ellis right there, get him up off his knees and flatten him out a little bit. Then he goes to the ropes. Open-handed chop by the Turk. Can't tell if it's going into the Adam's apple area or not. Boyd, could you? He couldn't, Bill. A lot of people think that the Turk is, because he's small in stature and big around that is fat, but inside of that, that he's barrel chested. He's rugged as they come. There's a lot of oh, power inside, Bill. Certainly is. There he's using the tights to propel Bob Ellis, and Usher's telling him to get off of it. But Ellis took care of that himself, and now you see the big cowboy getting a little hot. Oh, and those forearms are landing with some authority out there. goes Bob Ellis. One, two, three, and the Bulldogger from San Angelo, Texas, Cowboy Bob Ellis makes a triumphant tour. We'll be back in just a moment after this word from NWA Championship Wrestling. And now from Atlanta, Georgia, we'll see the North American Heavyweight Champion Ernie Ladd in action against Bill Irving. You watch along with us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this match one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Introducing first from Houston, Texas, weighing in at 320 pounds, the big cat, Ernie Ladd. Ernie Ladd. His opponent from Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 230 pounds, Bill Irwin. Bill Irwin. Ernie Ladd going up against Bill Irwin. Ladd, six feet nine. An immense individual, extremely powerful. The referee calls for the break. Ladd catches him on the break. Ladd. Who came from the ghetto into international prominence. From his uh, football career at Grambling College onto his pro football career. But he has been a, uh, a scrambler and a fighter all of his life. will move at any pace that uh, suits him when he's in a match. Into a full Nelson. Ernie Ladd with a forearm to the midsection. Irwin now fighting back gamely. A series of rabbit punches behind the head. Now Ladd catches him in the midsection. Lad gouging that time as he caught Irwin. Lad whips him off the rope. Caught him. That size 14 in the face. And obviously Ernie Ladd is the kind of man who enjoys inflicting punishment. Crashes down that massive leg across the throat of Bill Irwin. Lateral press. And did not allow the pin. Lad bringing his man back up. Lad an open-handed slap, another chop into the throat. Irwin, and I don't believe Irwin knows where he is at this point. Lad now becoming incensed, jabbing left hand, another left hand. Elbow across the top of the head. The count is on. Irvin coming to his feet very slowly. Lad catches him in the throat. And Lad continues to completely and totally dominate. It would be safe to assume at this point 
that Mr. Ladd can pick and choose his time to do. Ooh. Catching him both across the throat and across the abdomen, a count of three. A count of three, it is all over. There's your victor, the king of the Texas death matches, Ernie Ladd. Now the rugged, ruthless North American Heavyweight Champion, Ernie Ladd, with another victory. We'll be back with live action after this word. And now watch this interview and starting announcement by Rock Hunter right now along with us. All the wrestling fans throughout this entire area are quite familiar with the name Siegfried Stonky. You've seen him in action many, many times. But the man standing with me on my left, you may not be quite so familiar with because he is not uh, native to this area, but internationally known, not only as a fine wrestler, but recently as a guider of professional wrestlers, Mr. Rock Hunter. Well, I think you can quite safely say that my reputation precedes me. Now, I want you to take very careful notice of Herr Stanky taking a light workout. He won't stop moving the entire time that I'm talking. That's in the condition that he's in. This is the reason that I purchased the contract of Stanky and his partner, Hiss, who incidentally is appearing in Detroit at the present and can't be with us. But the reason that I like Stanky and Hiss is very simple. With Rock Hunter and his organization, winning is the only thing. Nothing else counts except winning. Well, it seems to me that foreign wrestlers are somewhat more dedicated to the principle of winning than most of your American wrestlers. Most American wrestlers tend to neglect training. Well, in the Rock Hunter organization, we don't neglect training, and we certainly don't neglect winning, because to reinforce my point, winning is the only thing. And the team of Stanky and Hess will do anything to win. But a matter of interest that would interest you greatly, I think Herr Stanky will be appearing very shortly in some single engagements that will interest you somewhat. And we hope you'll watch for it because it's gonna be a lot of excitement. This event is for one fall with a 10 minute time limit in the red corner at 253 pounds from Mongolia, El Mongo. And in the blue corner at 215 pounds from Houston, Texas, Wade Holt. And your next event live here on Championship Wrestling, the Mongol taking on the Rookie from Houston in the green tights, Wade Holt. Jack Howe, the referee, here's the bell. Well, I'll say one thing. You can look at Wade Holt's body and see that he certainly couldn't do anything like you just saw Siegfried Stanky do. I lost count of the number of push-ups that Stanky did, but he seemed like a machine doing them. And he did the Hindu squats. Uh, this was developed by Gama, one of the great Hindu wrestlers from Pakistan, India. And Gama, of course, could do 1,000 of them at a time without stopping, and they look easy. But you, have, uh, those of you at home should try that Hindu squat sometime. You see why Stanky has such tremendous thigh development and, then, and this tremendous musculature. He was sitting there doing push-ups, one right enough after another with seemingly no effort. And you've got to realize he's a 280 pound man. And anything that you do with body weight, the bigger you are, the harder it is to do. Oh, the Mongols, tremendous power, upper body power. A lot of Draco Roman technique in that standing suplex. I think he, under, he was looking at this rookie, Wade Holt's body, and uh, kind of went out there and uh, underestimated him starting with. And Wade made a couple of basic moves, but it's all over now, I'm sure. And a three count of victory as the Mongols slows down the rising aspirations of the rookie, Wade Holt. We'll be back with live action after this word from Championship Wrestling. For one fall with a 10 minute time limit in the red corner at 295 pounds from Pampa, Texas, outlaw Ron Bass. 
And in the blue corner at 235 pounds from Clinton, Iowa, Randy Brewer. Iowa's fine star, Randy Brewer, taking on outlaw Ron Bass, who claims he's the originator of the Texas Stampede hold. And who could better analyze and describe a match of this sort than the all-time Oklahoma Stampeder, Cowboy Bill Watts? Well, I'm beginning to wonder, you know, Boyd, after listening to Ron Bass, if I ever did do a stampede, you know, he says he originated the Texas Stampede. I think the only thing that saves me is that he's a younger athlete than I am and uh, has been wrestling a lot less longer. And, uh, and I was doing the stampede, the Oklahoma Stampede, unfortunately, uh, before anybody had even heard of Ron Bass. But uh, I, I want to say one thing. I don't think anything in wrestling is completely original. Maybe you might improve on it or develop it a little bit further. And certainly anything I saw an athlete do when I was watching the top athletes, if I saw it to be tremendously effective and thought it would fit my style and my strength and my physical capability, I certainly uh, took license and, and used it and put it in my uh, repertoire of offense or defense or whatever it was, because that's how you learn, by picking up things from other people. Of course, Ron Bass has impressed me in that he's got a tremendous amount of wrestling ability. He's a rugged man. Everybody knows by his reputation. And he goes out there and tries to beat him with wrestling. And Randy Brewer, I think every week that I see Randy, uh, he's a quiet young guy, uh, very introverted. Doesn't have a lot to say, but he gives it his all out there in that ring. He tries constantly. And of course, you heard earlier, Cowboy Bob Ellis. One of the top athletes of Texas boy used to watch Bob Ellis wrestle for years. Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and all those places. And he's running around with a skinned head, and it's this man's fault. Now Randy Brewer's really showing some moves out there. Now people are really appreciating it. You know, one thing about Randy Brewer, he's been put up against top-notch competition every week, Boyd, and the guys that are much more experienced, many times bigger and stronger. And he's gone out there and he's carried the battle to him. He's never laid back. Never. Week after week, he's the aggressor in almost every match. Well, you're going to see him start to bloom just like young Brian Blair did, where he starts winning more than he loses. It's, it's just that finally they got to get this stuff all together, you know. These, these kids come out here and they try and, and, and they just generally get the experience is what cuts them down by, by some guy that's a little more savvy and he'll, he'll pick out a weakness or he'll catch him and they'll take a faster advantage of the... Of, of the discrepancy or the or the flaw in the guy's attack and they'll make it count. But you'll see Randy Brewer blossom out, I feel sure, by the way he gives that 100% effort out there. Here's the heavier outlaw Ron Bass trying to wear down the smaller opponent. I'll tell you, following this, we got a match that everybody would like to see. Another thing Leroy's always done, give the people a main event free here on television for all the people at home that would be a top event in any arena, and that's The Brute versus Jose Lothario, and that's certainly, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Bass just overpowering him now, Boyd. My gosh, Randy Brewer, you can't count Randy Brewer beating until you get him in one, two, three. He shows it. And he's got a lot of guts. Wow, he ran right into a stiff leg air with that. Ron Bass, you know, is wearing those cowboy boots. They are a regulation ring sole on them, though. One, two, three. One, two, three. Outlaw Ron Bass down the popular star from Iowa, Randy Brewer. Wow, that's Bob Ellis. Yeah, I'm starting to say we'll be back, but we'll stay right here, Bill. It may not be over yet. Uh, yeah, boy, Bob Ellis. Bob Ellis said, try me. Try me. That's right. I'll get you, Bass. I'll get you. You got a gun in your body. You get in there right now. Now you can hear him. Bob, is, come Bob in, Ellis I'll is get challenging you. his man. Right and there. Bass is leaving the ring. Bob is screaming at him. We'll be back in just a moment. More live action. The main event, Jose Lothario versus the Brute. After this word from the NWA. For one fall with a 10-minute time limit in the red corner at 325 pounds from New York City, 
the Brute. And in the blue corner at 245 pounds from Mexico City, Jose Lothario. The Big Brute, all on the head, whiskered on the chin, versus Super Sock Jose Lothario. Jack Howe calls for the bell. Oh, this is a match between two big superstars right here. The Brute about 320, and what is Jose? Oh, boy. At 265, Jim. Well, I know he packs a wallop, and he's internationally known. And you see that there's what I was talking about. That's the difference in experience where young Randy Brewer, or some of the younger kids, when they break on the ropes, they may not, they may not quite protect themselves. You notice that Jose, when he broke on that rope, that he was ready. He knows guys like the brute from being through it, and he was ready to fire right back. Good move by Jose, duck under him to a hammer lock. And the brute wisely at that point, at being off his feet where his weight and strength wasn't an advantage, he went to the ropes. Come back, use that height to snap Jose over, but Jose went right to a head scissor. These guys seem like they're wanting just at any moment to break into this stuff. This the cuffs out there and uh, Donnie Brook there, boy. So far, they're staying with the wrestling. The brute, if the brute knows what I know about Jose, he'll stick to wrestling. That's right. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say that. These guys, sometimes they get ready to fire away. It's like Dan when Danny Hodge was active, you know. You get one of these rugged guys like Bruiser Bob Sweet Tan or somebody like that. And they'd, they'd pop that Danny a punch. It, it, almost like they realized that they'd done the wrong thing because Hodge with his ring record, if you wanted to fight, he was certainly ready. And that's the same thing with Jose Lothario. It's pretty hard, you know, you figure a guy, uh, uh, if, if, if he can box, you, you know, as you know, uh, I've never heard of a of a boxer ever beating a wrestler unless he plucked off the first punch when the wrestler was coming in because in most of the history books the wrestler had no problem he just took the boxer off his feet and beat him so so if you, if you figure if a guy can box and you can wrestle you can win but then some of these guys they they certainly don't want to stand up and, and team punches with a guy like Lothario because he can do both the brute using that tremendous upper body strength that weight advantage He's pretty cocky right now, but looks like he actually resents that full hit of hair, Jose Lothario. Yeah. I want to comment that we were forced uh, to turn in a complete report to the National Wrestling Alliance last week on Mike George uh, using that chair on Jerry Brown. And uh, they did find Mike George. And of course, uh, I know that sometimes that sets bad with some of the fans because of what Jerry Brown and then Bobby Jaggers have done to Mike George a few weeks back. But if what's good for the goose is good for the gander and rules have to be followed. And when Mike came in and attacked Jerry Brown, uh, uh, although it must have given him a lot of satisfaction and hurt him in the pocketbook. Next week we have the U.S. Tag Champions, Bobby Jaggers and Jerry Brown, and they'll be against the Louisiana Tag Champions, Ray Candy and Stephen Little Bear. And that should be a fantastic, that's the main event for next week here on television. Tremendous power by the Brute. The man who set off a volcano when he was booked against a guy and wasn't even booked, he went in and jumped Stephen Little Bear when Little Bear was booked against a guy that, and then the Brute turned around and whooped the guy and hurt him badly too. And it turned out that it was Eric the Red's kid brother. And Eric the Red just went whack on him. Uh, body slam. Uh, kicking is legal. That's what the flat of the foot. That's legal. He's going up. Referee's out of the picture. Referee's trying to come up out. But Jose got out of the way. And 320 landed right flat on its face. The assassin came in, Jose hit him a left hook and laid him right out here in front of our table, Boyd. And now he's polishing off the brute. He drops an elbow on him. Referees, the assassin's going up and Jose spots him, but the brute's holding on Jose's tights and the assassin gets Jose Lothario. Referee catches it for the disqualification, but the assassin caught Jose Lothario across the small ribs in the back and the kidney area. And Jose Lothario was down. He had beat both. It looked like he'd whipped them both there. But they got to him, as you can see, another referee coming in to stop it. There's Jack Howe disqualifying for jumping off the top rope. And that doesn't help Jose. He caught the full brunt of it. 
Now Jerry Usher out. out there. Both referees. The back. That leaves the assassin free. Getting in that last stomp, the assassin, before heading to the dressing room. We'll be back with more action. The Little Midgets after this word from Championship Wrestling. Midget tag team action now for one fall or remaining television time in the red corner at 95 pounds from Japan, the world's midget wrestling champion, Little Tokyo. And his partner at 94 pounds from merry old England, Lord Littlebrook. In the blue corner at 99 pounds from Texas, Butch Cassidy. And his partner, also from Texas, at 98 pounds, Cowboy Lang. You kids have been asking about them. Now on Championship Wrestling, Leroy McGurk and Bill Watts is bringing them to you. It's from Japan, a little Tokyo, and England, Lord Roger Littlebrook versus the Cowboys, Cowboy Lang and Butch Cassidy. And gentlemen, right there, you just saw some fast moving. I tell you, the world's midget champion in little Tokyo and Cowboy Lang, one of the most seasoned veterans. And it's, I always love to see these guys wrestle because they flat burn up that canvas out there. They move it around. Full Nelson there by little Tokyo, but Lang breaks it, spins under, and Tokyo goes to the ropes. <laughs> but Jerry Usher called for the break, and Cowboy Lang, being the Texas sportsman he is, he broke it and dropped little Tokyo right flat down. Here comes Lord Littlebrook. Wow! Woo. We were talking about a slap earlier, and you can see that Cowboy Lang sure didn't like that. <laughs> Left-handed again. That little Brook sneaks that slap in. Next week, big tag team action in our main event. Just like this one. Only tag with the big boys with Jaggers and Brown, the U.S. Tag Champions, against Candon Little Bear, the Louisiana Tag Champion. Also, another big main event in the Super Week next week will be Jose Lothario against Ernie Ladd, the North American champion. Well, these are not only main events on championship racing, but this could be main events in any arena, not in the United States, but all over the world. The one this well, week and the course, one next week, both. That's always been Leroy's theory, and I certainly concur with it, that you put your best foot forward on television, and people will flock to the arenas, and it's certainly proven successful as We've had a tennis record this summer that have just astounded the world, and we just want to thank the fans. And they make championship wrestling the number one spectator sport wherever it is. Whether it's in its time segment on television, it's got the number one ratings, or whether it's in the arenas. Of course, there's little Tokyo working on Butch Cassidy, and you see Lord Littlebrook standing outside there, stomping a foot on Cassidy, which keeps him grounded. Well, in, a, in, a, in our matches with the big men, that's an automatic disqualification when you save the guy. But I think Usher kind of has a little license for these midgets to let him go ahead and get after it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, little Tokyo, you know. And I think there's a Napoleon in the heart of every one of the little midgets that they'd like to take a big old boy and flat work him over if they could. And, and believe you me, even though they, they look cute and uh, doll-like and quick, I want you to know they're extremely powerful. You know, the good Lord, whenever he short circuits somebody in one department, he makes up for it in other departments. And these guys are tremendous power and tremendous speed. And I've, I've been in a couple of places where there was a, in a night establishment where there were some big old bullies that thought because there's little old midgets that they'd handle them. And I'll guarantee you after these midgets got through racing under the tables and up and down the bar and, and uh, whacking some of those big bullies around, they, they sure were. Surprise and endurance. You can't look away for a minute in this match. This action all over all the way. Two, three, four in the ring at the same time. All combinations. They all they got a heart of a lion in every one of them. Lord Littlebrook out there. He is one of the top for years and years. Sky Low Low, Fuzzy Cupid. You recall some of the names of the great midgets. Dwarfs, maybe a, a, a more proper term in some cases. Television time remaining. We got less than a minute. No decision yet. And they have never slacked. There's not been one second where they've. Right there, it looks like we're going to have a victory. 
Oh, Lang comes out of it. They're trying for the fall. Headbutt by Little Tokyo. Brooke was getting ready to go up and come off the top, but Jerry Usher caught him. Suplay, standing suplay. Goes for the cover. Looks like they're going to get a victory. No. Boyd, I don't know if they're going to get a decision. We won't have time, Bill. The time is all gone. I know the people are disappointed, and I know the little Brooks trying to crowd it in. A victory. Time is gone. Just long enough to tell you next week the main event: Jose Lothario versus Ernie Ladd, and also tag team action: Louisiana Tag Team Champions Ray Candy and Stephen Little Bear versus the U.S. Champions Bobby Jaggers and Jerry Brown. Till then, Boyd Pierce speaking for Bill Watts and Leroy McGurk, saying goodbye, everybody, for Championship Wrestling Television Network.